horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. Mm, nothing's too quiet, Stranger. Right, Pronto. Those bandits want our Morita white bread. Listen, cricket, stop. They've been frightened by the bandits? No, I step on him. Oh. Well, it's up to us to get Marita through to all those hungry children for lunches and snacks, for all those men who like to sink their teeth into a hearty, hefty sandwich, and for all those women who want only the best white bread they can buy. Listen. Did the cricket start again? No, someone eating Marita. What do you mean? Why, stranger, are you eating Marita white bread? Well, what good is that idea? Because your mouth full and big while you sleep, Marita loaf is open. I can't help it, Pronto. I'll give you a silver bullet if you don't tell anyone. You don't want silver bullet. Me want Marita white bread. Why, this is highway robbery. Well, that's the business we're in, stranger. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The lone stranger eats again. I owe Marita away! With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hooray! Lone Ranger and Tonto stopped their horses at the edge of the cliff that bordered on the roaring current of water flowing beneath. Across the stream, a great waterfall cascaded from the rocks above and seemed to leap out into the rapids below. Suddenly, the attention of the two riders was riveted at a point of the waterfall slightly above the place where it made contact with the stream. Tonto, look. Along the rocks behind the falls, we see men behind water. Do you see those two jutting rocks behind the falls to the right of where the men are walking? Ah, uh, Kimasabi. There's an opening of some kind there. I'm sure it's a cave entrance. It explains where they've come from. And look, Kimasabi. Yes. Them come from behind the falls now and start to walk uphill at the side. Two men. Do you see what's in the cave? No, Toto, not together. You do that. Explore the cave and see what you find there. I'll ride up to the ridge road and follow those two men. I'll meet you in camp tonight. Come on, Silver. The two men who had left the cave were outlaws Judd Fingal and Pharaoh Tyler. They mounted horses at the top of the hill and rode a few miles to an open area, covered with giant boulders and surrounded by dense woods. They left their horses in the woods and walked across the stone and boulder-strewn field until they came to a large rock of distinctive formation. They did not know that they had been followed by the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, creeping and crawling like an Indian, made his way between the rocks after leaving Silver in the woods as the two outlaws had done. Protected by the natural surroundings of the place, he inched his way unseen to a spot where he could hear the men he had followed. Then he heard a horse approaching, making its way across the rocky ground from the opposite direction. He strained forward to watch and listen. The horseman who approached Judd Fingal and Pharaoh Tyler wore a white silk handkerchief across his face. There was a slit for the eyes to see through. He dismounted and fingered his gun as he walked to them. Everything's in order at the cave? Everything. Loot from the last jabs packed away in the steel trunk. Guns are all ready for the holdup tomorrow, and we'll have the boys there early to pass them out. Good. Only forget about going back to the cave tonight. Have the boys use their own guns. Will, uh, will your men be at the bend before 7.30? Oh, yeah, if the overland stage is due to pass at 8. It does. I've checked on that. Stay here like all. 
The man called the boss was Floyd Gilby, a man known as a prosperous rancher in the territory. He met his lieutenant, Eddie Heaton, and together they went to the cave beneath the waterfall to make a first-hand check on the situation there. As they neared the spot, Gilby placed his silk handkerchief in an ornately engraved tobacco pouch. They were just near the entrance to the cave when they heard some rock slide downward from the opening in the cliff. Hey, boss. Carlo, who had been inside the cave investigating at the Lone Ranger's instructions, emerged. The two crooks saw him at once, a silhouette in the gathering darkness and the spray. Boss, that's not one of our men, I can tell. There's an engine. Come on, get him. Don't let him get away from here. The two men sprinted across the stone-covered ground and dived through the air together as Tonto stepped down to the level earth. The down pack of their tackles sent him to the ground, and then both men grabbed for the Indian. Tonto's feet shot out and hit Eddie Keaton square in the stomach, sending the man backward under the ground. Floyd Gilby grabbed the Indian by the neck with his left hand and reached for his gun with the right. But Tonto forced his way to his feet. His left, holding the gun hand of Gilby. They struggled over the ground, getting closer to the falls. Tonto's back was near the edge of the cliff when Eddie Heaton, rising from the ground, ran to assist his boss. His right fist rocketed over Gilby's shoulder and caught Tonto on the chin. Oh, that got him. This will finish him. He swung again at the dazed Indian. As Eddie's blow landed, Gilby let go of the Indian. Tonto grasped wildly and caught hold of Gilby's coat. The Indian's foot slipped from the edge of the cliff at the same moment. His grasp tore part of the coat from Gilby's back, and Tonto disappeared appeared below to where the cascading waters from above met the swirling whirlpools of water in the stream. Oh, gee, your coat's a mess, boss. Yeah, the whole right side. Hey, Eddie. Eddie. What's the matter? Why are you beating your side like that? Eddie, boy? my tobacco pouch was in my coat pocket. The pocket in the part of the coat that went down there with the engine. Are you afraid it'll float ashore and someone will find the handkerchief in your pouch? Yes. Anyone who ever saw me wearing it and hold up could identify it. My pouch has my name on it. Forget about it, boss. The pouch will never be found. Neither will the Indian's body. What Tonto lived. The Indian, a strong and powerful swimmer, clutched a large piece of black cloth in one hand. The fall, plus the cold water, made his every sense alert. He crammed the cloth into the belt of his trousers and began to swim underwater. When he felt the pressure above subsiding, he came to the surface. <coughs> the falls were 30 yards away and the water comparatively calm. With long, powerful strokes, Tonto made for the shore. The Lone Ranger in town waited until nightfall before going to the sheriff's office. When darkness came and permitted the masked man to walk in the deep shadows unobserved, he made his way into the rear office of Sheriff Ross Stewart. Sheriff Stewart, alone at the moment, leaped from his chair with drawn gun when he saw the intruder. All right, I'll beat you to the draw. Up with your hands. <laughs> They're up, Sheriff. But I hope you'll let me take them down. Within minutes, the Lone Ranger convinced Sheriff Stewart of his identity. The sheriff placed his gun back in his holster. Take your hands down. Oh, thanks. I'm sorry, but I, I didn't recognize you. There's no reason why you should, Sheriff. What brings you here? The Lone Ranger told of the men at the cave and the conversation he heard between Judd Fingle, Pharaoh Tyler, and the man called the boss. Sheriff Stewart was wide-eyed. A white silk handkerchief. He's the one who led the Great Falls bank robbery. Every stage robbery in this area for a year. You're sure they're going to hold up the Overland at the Bend? At 8 tomorrow morning. The two sections of the gang will meet there after 7. Well, then we'll be ready for them, all of them. If we went after the men you saw in camp tonight, we'd only have half the gang. We wouldn't have the leader whose name is Eddie or his part of the outfit. Sheriff, I'll remain at my camp until morning. Right. Pardon me, please, sir. Someone's in my front office. Yes? Who is it? Lord Gilby, Sheriff. May I see you? I'll be right there. Well, wait until I come back here, please. Hey, go right ahead. Sheriff Stewart met Floyd Gilby in his outer office. Is there something wrong, Mr. Gilby? Yes, I've been robbed. Some Indians raided my ranch tonight. They left my cattle and horses, but they took money and a lot of personal items, including my tobacco pouch, a very fine pouch, too. They rode off before I could summon help. They're miles away by now, Sheriff. A posse would be no good. Could, uh, could you come out to the ranch tomorrow morning at 8? I'll, uh, I'll show you what the Indians did. Well, uh, I, I can't make it then. I, well, I have other things to do out of town. But I'll be at your ranch later in the day, in the afternoon. Hey, good enough. I'll expect you. Good night. As Gilby hurried from the office, the Lone Ranger entered from the other room. Sheriff, I didn't mean to listen, but I did when I heard that man's voice. There's no doubt in my mind. That man Gilby's the leader of the outlaw gang. 
He's the one those men today call boss. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. What you doing, stranger? I'm baking up these flaky rich Morita brown and serve rolls, pronto. Them smell heap good, but no can do over open fire. Why not? It's a on package to bake in medium oven. Well, I made a medium fire. Uh, then it okay, me. You guess right, Pronto. These Marita Red Rich Brown and Serve Rolls bake up to a mouth-watering, flaky rich golden brown. The perfect hot rolls for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And they come freshly baked and piping hot from your fire in just six minutes. Uh, but good for family with many papooses. No, Pronto. The plural of papoose is papoosai. Uh, me may be no good in grammar, but you no good in making coffee. Yeah. Well, do you think it's easy chasing bandits all day and then slaving over a hot fire at night? Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marisa! Hooray! Now to continue... When the Lone Ranger told Sheriff Stewart that Floyd Gilby was the outlaw chief called the boss, the sheriff was unbelieving. Oh, you're wrong. Gilby's a rich and prominent man in this town. Civic leader. In spite of that, I'm sure he's the man I heard today. Well, if you listen, you heard him tell about being robbed. Outlaws don't report robberies to the sheriff's office. They might if they wanted to keep the sheriff away from the scene of a holdup. What do you mean? You've only his word that he was robbed. He didn't seem anxious to have you do anything about it tonight. He did want you at his ranch at 8 tomorrow morning. Well, how would that keep me from... Say, I see what you mean. That's the time that gang expects to hold up the Overland stage, isn't it? Yes. Oh, uh, where is Floyd Gilby's ranch? About six miles out in the San Antone Road. The bend is on the other side of town, isn't it? You're right. I get what you're driving at. If I call it Gilby's Ranch, it'll give the bandits a lot of time to escape in the other direction. But the important thing right now, Sheriff, is to lay a trap for the entire gang in the morning. Yes, I'll gather my posse now. Tell them to report here in the morning for important instructions. If you don't mind, Sheriff, I'll be near here until you round up the gang. Well, I don't mind at all. If this works out, it'll be your doing, not mine. It might be best not to bother about Gilby now. Oh, I'm meeting my friend Toto. Perhaps by morning we'll be able to give you proof that Floyd Gilby's a man I heard called the boss. When the Lone Ranger returned to his camp, he found Toto there. Toto recounted his struggle at the falls and his escape from death. Then he showed the masked man the part of the coat he had found and the tobacco pouch that had been in the pocket. Then he opened the pouch and drew out a long silk handkerchief. See, King Osambi... It got holes for eyes. Well, let me see it, Toto. Hmm. Toto, that's the handkerchief the man called the boss wore over his face. If we could prove it belonged to Floyd Gilby. He must have it. How you know name a man? See? Name right here. Toto handed the ornately engraved tobacco pouch to the Lone Ranger, whose eyes gleamed when he saw it. Floyd Gilby. So that's why he went to the sheriff and reported he'd been robbed by Indians. He wanted an alibi in case this pouch with a handkerchief was ever found. He'd be able to say someone else placed a handkerchief in it. Toto, we're going to Gilby's ranch now. It was after midnight when the Lone Ranger and Toto made their way from the woods above Floyd Gilby's ranch house to the rear of that structure. They could see a light in the window of a front room, but the rooms behind were all in darkness. The Lone Ranger spoke low to Tonto as he prepared to let himself in a rear window. Tonto, keep watch here. I'll not stay inside long. The Lone Ranger tiptoed across the floor and stood with his ear to the door through which he could hear the voice of Floyd Gilby speaking to another man. Inside, the other man, Eddie Heaton, listened. Yes, Eddie, everything's perfect. 
The sheriff will be busy all morning on a personal matter somewhere. You and the gang will be able to pull off the job without interference. You're not going to join us at all? Not for the hold-up, no. I'll be busy elsewhere. But uh, don't forget, I planned this job as I planned all the rest. You told the boys I'd be in charge, though, didn't you? Judd and Farrell will tell their men. You're part of the gang will just take it for granted. Well, I'd feel better if you were with us. But I'll do the job, all right. You can't miss. Oh, uh, let me borrow your gun, will you, dear? Uh, yeah, sure. Here you are. I left mine at the cave today. You use one of the guns in the cave. <laughs> There's some pretty shooting irons there. you like them. You want bullets? Extra ones, I mean? No, these in the gun will do very well. I'm not expecting trouble, but I like to have protection handy just in case. I'm going to mosey, then. have to meet my boys. I'll, uh, I'll ride down to the gate with you, Eddie. I may have some last-minute instructions to give you. Let's get started. Huh? When Gilby and Eddie left the house, the Lone Ranger came from the next room and went to the desk drawer where Gilby had left the gun he'd acquired from his lieutenant. The Lone Ranger removed the bullets, placed the gun back in the drawer, closed it, and left. Up, a short time later, the last man and Tonto rode back into the hills. And as they rode, the plan for getting final proof against Gilby formed in the Lone Ranger's mind. The next morning at 7 o'clock, Sheriff Ross Stewart's augmented posse met in the woods near the turn in the road, commonly called the Bend. They awaited only the signal of their leader before going into action. Sheriff Stewart was away from the immediate scene talking to the Lone Ranger who had come to him earlier with his plan. And with this pouch and handkerchief, any doubt I had about Gilby is gone. Perhaps I should have taken him before we came here. Oh, Tonto's keeping an eye on the ranch house and Gilby. He'll not get away. Well, I'll leave you now and join Tonto. Well, I'll be with you once we round up the holdup, man. There's no sign of them yet. When they come, we'll take them, be sure. We've already sent other men to the cave for the loot Tonto said was there. Good luck, Sheriff. Well, thanks. I'll meet you later. You'll have Heaton with you? Unless we have to kill him, yes. Good. I'll have a deputy look after him while I face Gilby. It'll be good to know that when I make the accusation, he'll only have an empty gun handy. The Overland stage reached the bend shortly before 8 o'clock. As it took the turn, a band of masked horsemen rode down from the hills, firing... A split second later, a greater body of riders galloped from the other side of the road, led by Sheriff Ross Stewart. The bandits were routed before they could get started. They were unprepared for the unexpected onslaught and started to ride away from the scene. But the sheriff's men were upon them and riding around them, so that in a short time, all those still alive were taken prisoner. Floyd Gilby, awaiting word that the holdup had been completed, was apprehensive when Sheriff Stewart entered his house. Well, what brings you here so early, Sheriff? You said you had business. Well, I did, Mr. Gilby. It's finished now. Or almost finished. My men just captured the greatest holdup outfit in the West. What? Holdup outfit? Yeah. Outlaws trying to hold up a stage at the bend. We were waiting for them when they rode down on the coach. You uh, you mean it? You mean... Oh, let me help you. I mean, we have the whole gang, including Judd Fingal and Pharaoh Tyler. You remember them? You met with them yesterday, before you went out to the cave beneath the falls, where you lost part of your coat and other things. Remember? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You, well, you're mad. What other things? Your tobacco pouch with a silk handkerchief in it. The one you wore when you led all the other holdups. Like the job at Great Falls? Uh, wait a minute. This is going far enough, Sheriff. I'm in no mood for jokes. Jokes? Here, look at this pouch. Look at this handkerchief. You recognize it? Well, I never saw that handkerchief. I told you last night that my pouch was stolen by an Indian. That's for this brazen accusation about my leading a hold-up well, gang. Calvin. I... Pete Calvin, bring him in. What are you doing? Who, who are you calling? Here he is, Sheriff. Eddie. Surprise, now, huh, boss? What's the idea of double-crossing me and the gang? What? They got us all right, but what's the idea? Who said they double-crossed? Oh, 
All right. Gilby, ashen-faced, moved quickly. He pulled a revolver from his desk drawer before the relaxed lawman could move. Hey, put your hands up quick. I thought you never used the gun, Gilby. I'm going to use it now. I'm going to kill the three of you. Smart, aren't you? Well, I'll show you. You weren't as smart as you thought you were. You've convicted yourself by your own words and actions now. No one will know it because I'll kill you. Oh, no, you'll not. We put our hands up as part of the game. There are no bullets in that gun. <laughs> Keaton told you that, eh? Well, he's wrong. I didn't shut it up. Yes, Sheriff. When Heaton left last night, I returned here and checked the gun he gave me. There were no bullets in it, so I loaded it. You, you mean that gun in your hand is not empty? No, there are bullets in it. So your act is finished, Sheriff. There are six bullets in this gun, two for each of you. And the first one will go into you, Sheriff. <laughs> Oh, Pete, grab it, come from the floor. Don't let him get it. Stand against the wall, Gilby. That was some shooting. Who, who shot me? I did, Gilby. Uh, Sheriff, I'm sorry. He fooled me when he reloaded that gun. I didn't expect that. You shot me? You unloaded this gun last night, didn't you? Yes, Gilby. Well, Sheriff, is everything under control now? It is perfectly, thanks to you. Then I'll leave. Adios. You did everything, and now I'll get the credit. I... Thanks again and again. He walked right out. Why, Sheriff, you should make him stay. The people around here would give him all kinds of rewards for doing what he and his Indian friend did for us. The only reward he wants is to make the West good and great. And free of the likes of these men here. All right, let me bandage that arm, Gilby. Yeah. Before we take you to jail. Yes, all, all right, but tell, tell me something. I, I never saw that man before. Yet you say he he found out everything and did everything. Who is he? The one man in the West who does find out everything about crooks and brings them to justice. He's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita old-fashioned enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich, old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Marita. Marita enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. Listen to the Lone Ranger. A masked man and Indian race down the slope. Blackie and Tex turned and urged their horses into a gallop up the opposite slope, while El Diablo held back to exchange more shots with the oncoming masked man and Indian. Realizing his two companions had left, he too turned and headed up the other slope. We'll try to capture one of them, Tuttle. One far behind the other two. We'll get him. Come on, The fleeing bandit leader looked back and saw the masked man and Indian moving closer. He emptied his gun in their direction. But the movements of his galloping horse spoiled his aim. And realizing his gun was empty, he holstered it and urged his horse to greater speed. Yes, yes, come on. Once more, he glanced back, just as the Lone Ranger's lariat snaked out and yanked him from the saddle. You're covered. Time, Toto. Uh-huh. Get him back. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. 
The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. <laughs>